Hi again, everybody. This video is sponsored by Contribution from Anonymous, and here's our story. Hi, Ali. This is from Anonymous. I sent a donation and hope you can help me with my second story. I sent you my first story a couple months ago. It was called The Narcissist Will Fight Till They Will Fight to Their Deathbed. About my 80-year-old stepmother who accused me of having sex with my father. You said she was nothing but a whore. This was hilarious and very true. It helped me see the situation without feeling so stressed about things she threatened to do. She really is a pathetic character. In my last video, I described how my dad left her for nine months and went to a secret location, but my stepmother found him and then hounded him until he was thrown out of his new home. After becoming ill in April, he returned to my stepmother so she could look after him and because he needed somewhere to live. As an update on my first story, my dad has contacted other people in my family, but he has not contacted me. While my stepmother has made it clear that I am not allowed to have contact with him, there is no reason why he couldn't get in touch. However, I have decided to go no contact with him since he is enabling her abuse of me. She still, she still posts abusive message on Facebook and makes threats at 80. Since going no contact with both of them, the muddy waters have cleared and I can understand more clearly what his motivations were in the whole sorry saga. I am now, I now suspect my dad is a covert narcissist. I've always blamed our infrequent contact as being because of my stepmother's jealousy. However, in the time he was on his own, his actions were exposed. Usually they were masked by my stepmother who dominates in all situations. My dad has always blamed my stepmother, but I think he hides behind her unreasonable behavior. I can now see how he has a constant need for attention, when she which she supplied, whether it be negative or positive. Exactly. And you got this exactly right. And that awakening you have when you think that the person who was the enabler and the poor victim of the overt, outward, abusive, crazy narcissist is really the one pulling the strings the entire time because he's the one benefiting off it. He enjoys the sympathy and the pity he gets off of it, much like my father. I've received the most horrendously insulting emails and messages for months from my stepmother's flying monkeys but he never came to my defense or did anything to protect me. He just told me to ignore it even though it was affecting me. He showed no interest in me, only in what I could provide for him. He had a sense of entitlement to my financial support. This is a father who left his six and seven year old children and went to live in the USA and gave barely any financial support throughout our lives. He was also violent to my mother and that is why she left him. It has also occurred to me since going no contact that there are several narcissists in my family and my dad is the common denominator. My mother, his first wife, has narcissistic traits and my sister, his daughter, is a full-blown narcissist. My first question relates to the occurrence of narcissism across generations. I don't know much about what a normal family situation looks like, but it seems to me that narcissism spreads like a bacteria up the family tree. I guess there must be both a genetic and environmental component. As my dad had very little contact with my sister growing up, I can only assume that genetics plays a strong role. This is because my sister showed some very strange characteristics from an early age, uh, i.e. violence, extreme temper, outbursts, and the ability to manipulate my mother into favoring her. Having said that, my dad left when she was three years old and she has always claimed that how that abandonment led to depression throughout her life. It may have just been a convenient excuse for some attention. So my first question is, can a normal person turn into a narcissist during their experience or must there be a genetic component? I would be interested in your thoughts. Um, I think personally it's all behavior. It is all behavioral. It's nature versus nurture. Now, it all roots in some sort of abuse, something that was processed wrong at some time. But yeah, I mean, I was abused by my parents. 
my parents were abused by their parents. Now, I try to trace it back because I've been having these thoughts like, how far back does this go? How far back does this go? And in my case, at least to get to me, um, I can trace it to as far as the furthest back I could go is my great grandparents. I know my great grandfather escaped Armenia in 1915 when the Turks were during the, the Armenian genocide. Family was slaughtered. I think he was the only one to get out. I'm pretty sure he was the only one to get out. And I believe from what Virginia told me that he met my great grandmother through Italy on a boat. I, I, I believe that's the story. So my grandmother was born in New York City. There were no other family other than my great grand. I don't know much about my my great grandmother other than the earliest story I had gotten for Virginia and I and I had told this was my grand Virginia was very jealous of her mother's red hair or like had this curly gorgeous red hair apparently and her mother's she said her mother used to like drape her hair fight over my grandmother's head, Virginia's head. And she said, and she would say to her, oh, if I could give you my hair and put it on your head, I would. And Virginia said, that's odd, because if I had her hair, I wouldn't share it with anyone. Now, Virginia is the source because she had a brother, my Uncle Dick, who really didn't have a whole hell of a lot to do with her. Um, on my my mother's father, the one I look like, Redento, apparently the my great-grandmother on that side, my mother's grandparents, the grandmother was was a real, like, good woman. But um, Redento's father, that's, that's my mother's father, was apparently a, um, a molester, a child molester, and really aggressive. Uh, used to call my grandfather stupid, asshole. So that's where all that originated from on that end. Um, it was coming from my great-grandfather on my father's side, and it started with Virginia. On my on, on, on my mother's side my great-grandfather uh, so my mother's narcissism comes from my great-grandfather the Italian and Virginia the Armenian now my father is a little more sketchy because I don't know I mean I know my I know his father's a perv his mother was a little old woman from, she always seemed like this little old woman from Italy. Um, but the point is, okay, if you think back and you learn and you look at the relationships and some of the stories that your narcs or your family might have told you, you'll be able to piece some of this stuff together. The point is, it's generated, this shit's been going on and I've been saying that, it's a cycle. And it gets handed down from generation to generation because the behaviors never change. Never change until somebody steps out and says, I want nothing to do with this. I am breaking the cycle. My second question relates to the self-sabotaging impact of narcissism on me, and in particular how I deal with food. I started having a problem with overeating at the age of nine when I felt quite isolated at home as a fully-fledged scapegoat with my sister as the golden child. My weight has fluctuated all my life after the recent very upsetting and stressful episode in which I have been harassed and abused by my stepmother, my sister, and all of their flying monkeys. I have struggled to get control. 
the two periods of time that I have not the two periods of time that I have not had a weight problem is when I have divorced the only two men that I have married who are both narcissists. That's for another video. I know you two have struggled with your weight in the past and have done a brilliant job to regain control. I have a strong desire to lose weight and look fantastic for my daughter's graduation next year and her wedding a year and, and her wedding a year or so later. I will make sure that the narcs will see the photos of me somehow and make them extremely angry. It is, this is a very motivating thought. I don't want them to think that their dreadful behavior has an effect on me, quite the reverse. I want to prove how I'm the better person and cannot be destroyed. So my question is, how do you break the link between your weight and your narcissist? I still have frequent contact with my mother who has narcissistic traits and often makes reference to my weight, apparently out of concern for me. Again, another video. I went no contact with my sister two months ago and my stepmother and my dad four months ago. Thanks, Ali. I really appreciate your help and look forward to your videos. You're an inspiration. I admire your willingness to go public with your stories. It really helps me to understand all the difficulties I have encountered. With best wishes, Anonymous. <clears throat> the weight. Food. What eating is to me and probably to you and a lot of people who tend to overeat is it's that denial that you're trying that hole. Everybody says, you know, you're trying to fill that hole, you know, with money, with love, with food, with 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 um, drugs, with alcohol. You know, you're trying to fill it, you're trying to fill it. What's the hole though? What is the hole? The hole is the denial. The denial of love. The denial of appreciation. The denial of a real family structure. What food gives you and drugs can give you and spending gives you is instant gratification, that endorphin rush. It's instantly gratif gratifying. Once you're at an age where you're old enough to control your old, nobody can take it away from you. You're not hungry. When, when, when you're overeating like that, you're not hungry. You're stressing about something else. You're feeling unappreciated. You're feeling love. You want some kind of gratification, some kind of validation. You're seeking validation, whether it be in the food or the spending or the drugs, or the alcohol, or the sexual behavior. That's what that hole is. And that's why it can never be filled. And the reason for the yo-yoing up and down, I don't think is so much what kind of diet it is. You start a diet, you start having success. Now, for people who can dramatically go up and down like I can, you get addicted to the weight loss. You get addicted to it. and But always in the back of my mind is that fear this is going to end soon. That switch is going to be hit. And you're almost filling the hole with, with diet and exercise. But even that's not filling the hole because you're not dealing with what caused the hole to begin with. You still have some of these people in your life. You said to this day your mother still makes comments. You know what those comments are about. You know they're passive aggressive to keep you heavy. We get addicted to things even some things that are on the positive side like weight loss and diet and exercise exercise can become a negative because we're doing it not to get healthy we're doing it to fill the hole and that's why it doesn't last because all you're doing is trying to fill all you're going to do is fill the hole without dealing with why the hole is there and 
who dug the hole to begin with. If you're going to keep the people that dug the, that, that hole in your soul, in your life, you're never going to fill it because you're filling it. They're, you're trying to fill that hole and they're at the bottom shoveling it out. They got one of those, they got one of those, you know, industrial grade grader machines that's just spitting it out. You're shoveling it in, they're spitting it out, and it's getting deeper and deeper. Why? Because they're in there, because they're still in your life. Losing weight is great. You need to lose weight. If you're overweight and you're not healthy and you, you're not happy with the way you look, you need to lose weight. I encourage everyone to do it. But don't get addicted to losing weight trying to fill the hole that, that they caused especially when they're still at the bottom, digging it deeper. So thank you so much for your contribution and your story. I really hope this helps. Thank you to everybody watching. Please leave any opinions or advice in the comment section below. And again, if you want your story read on the channel, if you have a topic you'd like me to cover or a narcissist you'd like to expose, you know what to do with the PayPal and my email links in the description box. I'll have the video right back to you. This is Ali Matthews. Thanks for watching. See you all again soon. Bye-bye.